everyone, it's Sarah with RegisteredNurseRN.com and in this video I'm going to talk about Lexiskin Cardiac Nuclear Stress Test. In this video I'm going to talk about what it is, who it's ordered on, how the test works, side effects from the medication, and some prep. Things to keep in mind for inpatients and outpatients. So first, let's talk about what it is. A Lexiskin cardiac nuclear stress test is a test ordered by either a primary care doctor or a doctor in the hospital for a patient who um, is either presenting with chest pain, they want to rule out maybe if the patient has maybe a pending myocardial infarction, because this is one of the most non-invasive ways you can do it first. The invasive way is through a heart catheter so many times they want to go through this route and what they do is they get imaging with this that's where the nuclear part comes in and they will take nuclear imaging and then they'll put stress on the heart and do nuclear imaging again and a cardiologist will come and look at those imaging and see if there's anything suspicious on that imaging and if so they will progress the or recommend the patient for a cardiac a cardiac cath where they may have to get a stent place because they have a blockage and typically who it's ordered on, it can be ordered on maybe patients who are having chest pain, they've came in, uh, they, their EKG maybe shows little things, something suspicious, but nothing major, their troponin levels are negative, but they have a history of it, maybe they already have stents, or um, sometimes physicians will order this on patients who do have extensive cardiac histories, and they actually um, recommend that they come every couple years and get a stress test. Sometimes patients who've had open heart surgery, their doctor will order this every once in a while just to make sure that those grafts are still viable. So there's many different reasons it can be ordered, but typically it's for that patient that they want to rule out who is having chest pain, make sure that they're not having a potential um, um, indication for like a heart attack due to a blockage. So how does this test work? Now many times um, you'll be sending a patient for a stress test maybe in the hospital and a lot of times the patients want to know how long is this going to take and this depends on what type of nuclear agent your hospital uses. Most facilities use what's called Cardiolite and if that's what's used um, it will take anywhere from about two to four hours for the test so let them know that because a lot of patients get really um, perturbed whenever they weren't told that and they thought it was going to take 30 minutes. And this is how it works. What happens is that your patient will go to a stress lab and they will um, get an IV, hopefully they already have an IV, and the radio technologist, nuclear technologist, I mean, will inject them with the cardiolite agent in their IV. There's no side effects from this. All it is is a radioactive tracer. It's not a dye. It doesn't affect the kidneys or anything like that. And it circulates through the system. And it has to do that for one hour. Then after they just set for one hour, they will go underneath a machine that will scan their heart. Now, make sure that the patient isn't claustrophobic or have issues laying flat because sometimes if they do, it's not like an MRI machine, but still just those close quarters. Claustrophobic patients will probably need a little sedative or if they have um, difficulty breathing, you may want to discuss that with the doctor because the patient may not be able to complete the test. Then they get the imaging and then they'll go to the stress lab with the nurse. It's typically a registered nurse and they will hook them up to an EKG machine where they'll get continuous 12 lead EKGs, a blood pressure cuff, and an SpO2 monitor. And then they will start the test. Some facilities require a physician or a nurse practitioner to be present whenever the test is starting, whenever before you inject the Lexus scan, or the registered nurse will run it. It varies state by state. And what will happen, the nurse will inject the Lexus scan into the IV. It takes about five to 10 seconds to inject. It's an IV push. And then right after the nurse injects, the nuclear medicine tech will go behind the nurse and inject for a second time the Cardiolite agent. And then the patient, um, the nurse practitioner is watching the EKG and then the patient could start experiencing some side effects. And typical side effects with Lexus scan, it's part of the nitrate family, is, um, they could feel warm or flushing in their face because those coronary arteries on the heart have dilated. 
And they could also experience nausea, tingling in their arms and legs, some chest pressure, chest discomfort, difficulty breathing, and abdominal pain, and a headache. That's typically what patients have. Some patients don't feel anything at all, so make sure you let them know that, because a lot of people get nervous about it, and the symptoms are a lot milder compared to back in the day whenever they used to use the drug called adenosin. So ask the patient if they've had a stress test before and if they've used adenosin, and tell them it's a lot different than that because we no longer use adenosine. LexaScan replaced that. And then after that part of the stress, when everything, everything looks okay, they will wait another hour. And during this hour, patients are usually a little bit happier because they can eat and drink. And we like to encourage them to set up and to eat and drink because it gets the bowels moving and the, the nuclear medicine tech can get better imaging because it moves the stomach out of the way. Then, after they've waited that hour, they will go back under the heart machine for the scan, which will take about 10 to 12 minutes, and then they're done. And then the imaging will be processed out to a cardiologist who will look at that imaging and send a report back to the patient's doctor or nurse or whatever. So those were the side effects. Now let's talk about the prep, things that you want to make sure that you're watching out for because there are some things that a patient has to have before they can do this test. Okay, in the inpatient setting, this is where the patient's in the hospital, you're their nurse, and you're watching them. You want to make sure that you report any abnormal labs to the nurse, like any uh, abnormal potassiums, if it's too low, whatever your hospital protocols are for potassium levels, any abnormal calcium magnesium levels, hem hematocrit hemoglobin. Next, uh, make sure the patient hasn't had a VQ scan within the next past 48 hours because they use a nuclear agent and we don't want to give them another dose of this radioactive agent within the same amount of time. Next, um, make sure they've had at least two troponin levels ordered or three. This varies depending on hospital protocols, so make sure you're following your hospital protocols for this, but this is generally what it is and that they're negative. Um, and D-dimers, if a D-dimer is ordered, make sure it's negative. And if it's positive, you want to let the physician know because they'll probably want to order maybe a CT with PE protocol to rule out any blood clots in the lungs. Uh, medications, make sure they haven't taken anything called Agronox or Presantine within the, the last 72 hours because this interacts with LexisScan. Make sure that they haven't taken anything called Theophylline or Aminophylline within 24 hours. This is actually the antidote for LexisScan, so the drug wouldn't even work, and that they haven't consumed any caffeine products. Um, this includes any medication too with caffeine in it within 24 hours. Uh, and of course, no food or drink for four to six hours and um, that they're not breastfeeding. Some patients who do have stress tests, they maybe are there to get their cardiac problems checked out, they've just had a baby and make sure that, that they are breastfeeding, that you tell them that this radioactive material can be passed through their breast milk and you want to educate them on that. Very important because sometimes that gets overlooked. Now if you have a patient who's coming in from outside, from home, and they're just coming in, maybe you work in a clinic and you're sending a patient for a stress test, you'll want to make sure you meet the educate, I mean the medication things about the agronox of the theophylline, no caffeine, the food and the breastfeeding. It's the same prep except for the labs for what the inpatient would be because you have access to those labs. So that is a little bit about the LexisScan Cardiac Stress Test. And thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.